Hello everyone, welcome to our tutorial on while loops. This will be our first intro into the concept of loops, so we'll take some time to explain what they are and take a look at some examples. So we're going to start with what are loops and what are specifically while loops, how do they work? And then we'll write and run a simple while loop. This is an important part of game development, so if you're interested in developing games, this is a great place to really pay attention. Let's head to the code and get started. All right, so what is a loop? Well, a loop in programming allows us to execute the same code multiple times without having to write it multiple times, okay? The concept is that we write it once and we tell the loop how many times to run and then it executes a code that many times. Okay, so this isn't so much of a problem if we only have like a couple of lines of code that we want to execute a few times. But if for whatever reason we want that code to run a hundred or a thousand times, that's going to be horrible to have to write that all out by hand. And it's really poor code practice to be repeating code that many times. The idea is that you put it in a loop, you set it to run a thousand times, and then it does the work for you. So a simple while loop actually looks very similar to an if statement, except that instead of if and then a test, we have while and then the test. So then we have while test and then code to execute. Okay, so it works the same way, but just multiple times potentially. So we'll perform some tests, usually comparing variable values. If that is true, we execute the code. The difference is with an if statement, it would end here and then go on to execute any code down here. However, with a while loop, it will loop back up to the top and then it will perform the test again if it's true, it executes the code, loops back to the top, and it keeps doing this over and over again until eventually this is false. That means we have to make sure that these while loops eventually will exit, otherwise you just get them running endlessly, okay? So a simple example, and is often used, um, this is often used in like basic game loops, would be to check to see if we have reached the end condition. So if we're building a simple like move left and right type game, we might have, that's uh, kind of like a platformer game, we might have a position and we'll just stick with position because we're not worried about Y positions for now. And maybe we'll start at zero, okay? And we'll have some kind of end goal or an end position, okay? And maybe we'll set this equal to five. So our goal is to carry out a set of commands or basically run the game as long as we haven't reached the end position. So we might do something like this. Well, our current position is less than our end position. Then we'll execute the code. Okay, so as soon as this is no longer true, that means we have reached our end position or perhaps gone past it. In which case, um, our game should be over as we have already, you know, we've kind of won. So in our case, we'll just do something really, really simple. We'll just increase our current position by one. So we're moving right all the time, and then we'll maybe print out the position. Realistically, you'd handle any other game logic in here, such as the actual player commands, whether you're moving left and right. You'd also do stuff like collision detection, um, any other kind of game logic that needs to be implemented, but we're not really building a game. This is just a really quick example. So we can go ahead and run this, and you can see that we're getting this printed five times, the numbers one through five. Reason being, that uh, we start out with position equal to zero and end position is always going to be five. We increase it by one, so position is now one, and then we print it out. Then we reach the end of the loop, we go back to the top, position is one, that is still less than five, and so we execute the code again and again and again, and we keep doing this until eventually position is equal to five. Then we loop to the top, five is no longer less than five, and so then we exit out of the loop and then would execute any other code down here. Note again the indentation style um, rather than using curly brackets. Okay, so that's very important. If you want to exit the loop um, and write any code afterwards, just make sure that it doesn't have the same indentation. Make sure that it is over on the edge again. Okay, so that's pretty much it. That's a really quick intro into loops. This is something that if uh, you didn't quite guess it that from this explanation, you definitely want to try this out um, and try to go over some examples off your own. Loops are really quite a fundamental part of programming and can be a little confusing, so definitely give this a practice. Just make sure that at some point your loop will exit if it has no kind of exit condition. For example, if I was never increasing my position by one, the loop would run infinitely and that's a problem. Okay, so when you're ready to move on, we'll cover a second type of loop, which is the for loop, or in Python it's actually a for in loop, but more on that in the next one. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. 
What's up guys, welcome to our tutorial on for loops. This is the second type of loop we'll be covering, so make sure that you're comfortable using while loops before moving to this one, as these ones could be a bit more complex. So we'll start by covering what are for loops, then we'll write and run a simple example, and then we'll compare them to while loops and talk about when and where we would use each one. Let's head to the code and get started. All right, so let's talk about for loops and how they're different from while loops. Well, a for loop is another kind of loop, which means it's just a way to execute code multiple times. The difference is a for loop typically has a predefined start and end point. Okay, so we always know exactly how many times the loop is going to run, or at least we know the maximum number of times it will run. So this prevents us from getting stuck in an infinite loop, like with a while loop where the end condition is never going to evaluate to false. Now, because we know exactly how many times these are going to run, they're often paired with lists or ranges because we can use a range, for example, to specify exactly how many times a for loop will run, or we can use a for loop with a list to iterate through each element. So we'll take a, actually a look at an example of both. I'll set up a very simple list. And, oops, not variable. I just want my inventory. Okay, and it's going to set it equal to some items. Um, let's have, again, we'll start with an axe. Being a little uncreative today, uh, we'll do a knife and then we'll do like a helmet. Okay, so we've got three items. If we want to iterate through each of them and print them out, I could do print out inventory of zero, inventory one, two, etc. But if there are a hundred items, that's going to be really tedious. Instead, I could use a for loop and say something like for item in inventory print item. And that is all I need to do. Okay, that way, if there are a hundred elements, I could print out all 100 of them with two lines of code. Okay. Now, the reason that this works is because um, we are looking for everything in this collection type. So in this case, it's a list. And so it says, okay, this list has three elements in it. We're going to iterate through and visit each one, so three times. And each time we iterate through, we're assigning the value that we're on into this variable called item. So for the very first uh, pass, okay, um, it will get the first item, so axe, and it will assign that to item, and then it will print the item, which contains a value of axe. Then it gets to the second loop iteration, says, okay, what's the second element? It's a knife, assigns it here and prints it out. What's the third element? Helmet, prints it out, etc. And then it reaches the end and it exits. Okay, and it does all of this automatically. All right, so if we actually don't have a list to pair a for loop with, and we just want to run some code a set number of times, we typically use a range. So we would say something like for i in range from zero up until, let's say we want to run something five times, we would say from zero to five, okay? And then we would say maybe print, I don't know, print i, okay? So nothing very exciting. So we go ahead and run that, and you can see that we're getting i printed out five times. We start at zero because that's our start point in the range. We end at four because our range goes until five, but again, the top upper bound is not included. And then we're just printing i out, okay? So this is very useful if, again, we're not iterating through a list, we just wanna run something a set number of times. This is great if we're iterating through a list specifically, and then we would use a while loop if we don't know exactly how many times we want to run. For example, with a game loop, um, you're typically like looping through a set of actions and like updating the game, also handling um, user interaction collision detection, all of that stuff, but you're constantly doing it as the game runs. That's typically inside of some big while loop, okay? Because we don't know exactly how many times it will run. Whereas with a for loop, we always know exactly how many times it will run, and so and that's why we specify our start and end points. Okay, so play around with this a bit. Maybe try some for loops with lists. Maybe try some with just ranges and doing something a set number of times. When you're ready to move on, we'll switch topics and talk about functions. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching and see you guys in the next one.